Hello everybody, welcome back to the L1 show. Today's January 10th and we're doing government and security. Wait, was it security? Security's right. Okay. There's it's so security. much news. We're getting back into the regular schedule of things. Hope the new year's off to a good start. Devember is going on. We got some new sponsors. Fun, fun I things happening. I don't understand what there being a lot of news has to do with this. Yeah, we don't do, we don't talk about things oh, here. Yeah. yeah, it's just links. Yeah, there have been, <laughs> there have been even more algorithmic changes that are incredibly oppressive. I think that's the trend. <laughs> However, there are not as many links, unfortunately, because it's Monday to, or when did we do it? Sunday? Sunday. It we was lost Sunday. days in the cycle. Anyway. Links with friends. This show is linked with friends. I watched a fashion historian talking about like the origins of, uh, I can't, I can't say it either, but like the blank chic look of the nineties where the models were super thin and she couldn't say, uh, like, oh, the drug. Yeah, yeah, she couldn't say she couldn't say even just drugs. She was getting demonetized for that. So we made two. I don't know. Uh, heavily processed poppies. Yes, that's it. <laughs> she was like, I can't say this word every time I've tried to upload it with saying this to describe it historically. I I get demonetized. It's it's, so. a, it's amazing though because it's also retroactively thing. So if the algorithm yeah. ever gets smart enough, it'll it'll find it, out. it. Yeah. Because why would we talk about that? I mean, it's not like that's a problem in our society that needs to be discussed. Mm. Certainly not. But the advertisers, they're not fans of it. And uh, they're probably not Allegedly. fans. They're probably not fans of us talking about this kind of thing either. Because yeah. the advertisers are also generally the employers. <laughs> U.S. moves to bar non-compete agreements in labor contracts. Yeah, it looks like the Labor Department is going to copy paste the rules in California, which companies like Twitter have often skirted. So this gets rid of it entirely. You cannot restrict anything. You can't because usually it's like a geolocation thing. Like, yeah, you can do it over there, but not here. You can't do it for a year or whatever. A lot of them are really restrictive. None of that. Can't do any of it. This doesn't apply if you're really, really, really super high up. You know, niche. Yeah. So if you work for Apple in their self-driving division, you probably can't go to work for Tesla in their self-driving division quickly. An another way of saying that if you're watching this, you're not in that group. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but it is crazy. Cause I know I've heard of like places around here where it's like, if you do work for us, you can't do work for any other agency. And it's like, that's ridiculous. Yeah. Like you would yeah. not be able to find another job. That's a good thing to get rid of. Yeah. Competition is always good, always. And uh, this one, this is one of those links where all the various places that I look for links to share with our friends, this one was posted about 10 million times yeah. in yeah. every single one of them because it's such a fun headline. It's also one we probably can't say. Yeah. Right? Yeah. But uh, what a what a dumb thing. Now, you might be thinking, because we've talked about this in terms of uh, England tried it. Yep. Australia tried it. Yep. Wasn't there an Asian country that tried it? Uh, was it Thailand? Maybe. Or, uh, anyway, lots of different. I think there's might have been a South American one. And everybody comes to the same conclusion. You can't do it because there's this massive infrastructure that you need. But keep that in mind. Watching certain things online that is very prevalent online now requires <laughs> age verification in Louisiana because of new law. This is the same thing. Now, if we take the old uh, Que Bono, who benefits, and we apply it to this to try to figure out why they would do something this stupid, who would they have to be in bed with, or who would benefit from this? Louisiana is getting a new legal digital driver's license. You'll be able to use this to verify your identity online. Oh. Dot, 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 question mark. This will keep you from having to send your driver's license scan into... The P hub. Hmm. Uh. So <laughs> now I didn't do this legwork, but if any of you sleuths out there, I would like to see who's on the board of directors of La Wallet. It's not LA, right? It's because it's Louisiana. Well, that's their that's their state abbreviation, but but then you, but I'm saying you wouldn't say LA because it's people not, would think LA, it's California, LA. It's yeah. La Wallet, right? La Wallet is much much more dystopian than La Jala, for example. So yeah, that's somebody's gonna make a lot of money off of that, and a lot of people are gonna be super annoyed. And I think ultimately it's gonna be ineffective, which is yeah. usually what happens every time someone tries one of these. Also, an interesting this is gonna be um, because this happens with alcohol sometimes too. It's not that you can't do it; it's that 
your it must be less than 33% of your overall business. Mm -hmm. So like if you serve, uh, you know, waffles and you have a photography studio and you sell booze. All right. Well, 33%. So the P hub or other sites like it need to pick up two other things to sell you. <laughs> So what you're telling me is they're going to buy Etsy. Ugh, Etsy's already kind of a cesspool, <laughs> unfortunately. Like so Etsy used to be so good to find handmade stuff, and now people have just flooded it with like the same crap you see on Amazon. Would it count if the three things we sold were the normal thing, and bath water, and panties? Mm. Could we get away with it? <laughs> Technically, the other two are not adult material. I'm sensing a Shopify competitor. <laughs> And, uh, of course, we've been covering the big chat GPT and the overall rise of the artificial intelligence, and regulators are trying to get ahead of it. <laughs> New, York, uh, New York City bans students and teachers from using chat GPT. It's going to have uh, well, some can't... impacts on student learning, according to administrators. Well, I kind of understand that. Like, you don't learn how to actually look up information for yourself. You just type it in and it finds it for you and formats it for you and does everything for you. But if the future is a world where AI continues to grow and get more powerful, isn't learning to use the AI a valid skill in the future? Unless you have to troubleshoot the AI. No, I, I think all of that is, is true, but I'm thinking back to my own childhood where I literally drove people to insanity, just asking why and trying to absorb information. And so if I'd had something like chat GPT, I would have, I would have done that. But it would have been bad because the information was faulty. <laughs> yeah, the information could either be faulty or like you have no way to to actually look it up. You don't learn any skills about how to actually look and verify information. I think any attempt to automate child rearing is going to end in disaster. Yeah, yeah. you right. kind of got to put in the the, the effort. Yeah. But but in child rearing, as I'm I'm sure that you'll no doubt attest, it gets to a point where you just don't want to deal with the child anymore. Everybody is engaged out and they're just, you know, please quiet. Yeah, that's why no words. That's why you shouldn't do that. <laughs> There's a very, very few people who are built for that kind of thing. Way less than are doing it. And of course, the uh, now this one almost went in the collapse section of business, but I figured New York regulators will throw it in government because government was a little sparse this week. Coinbase reaches a $100 million settlement with New York regulators. The crypto exchange will pay $50 million in a fine for letting customers open accounts with few background checks and uh, we'll spend 50 million to improve compliance. So really this is, we're getting off pretty easy here. Uh -huh. Now Coinbase, much like Louisiana, requires the driver's license and you have to go through all these horrible steps. It takes forever. If you're trying to like, if you haven't used your account in a while and you're like, oh, I gotta get out of this market, forget it. It's mm -hmm. gonna take you a couple of days. So they go pretty hard. I don't know if this was before that or if they want even more, but Jesus, that is gonna be uh, a lot. And that means that Coinbase now has all that information for to lose of yeah. mine. Because you know they can't defend it. Disgusting. And uh, it only took, let's see, this came out on the 4th. Four so nights. let's assume they took the first off. Hmm. It actually only took the EU three days to start finding Meta again. Meta's New Year kicks off with $410 million in fresh EU privacy What funds. a beautiful photo of Zuckerberg here. He's sad. <laughs> He's sexy, he doesn't have legs in the metaverse yet. In the beginning, he didn't care about these fines, but now that money is getting tight, he's like, <laughs> oh. Yeah, it means a lot more now, huh? This has to do with all of the same stuff that we've heard before. Copy-paste. You know, we all know that Meta's guilty of all these horrible things, so they have no defense. What is it? Was it 25% of the budget was supposed to go to Metaverse? Every time they have a fine like this, he gets a little sadder because that shrinks the pie he has for Metaverse yeah, development. Right. And uh, they have this crazy thing that they're trying in the EU, which once again, much like the Louisiana thing, Australia tried this. It didn't quite work out, but a lot of people churned and made money. So let's do it again. Internet providers warn against EU plans to make big tech cover telco costs. This is uh, a lot of words to say, internet metering, fast lane, fast lane stuff all over again. You know who wants fast lanes? The ISPs, because they can make more money, because they've got a captured market. It's like the water company charging you, you know. For going... better water. Yeah. I would love it if they're like, well, 
you can have your service and you get a discount if you promise to never use Facebook. We'll actually block facebook.com hmm. from your service. I'm not paying more for that. That's what they're hoping for. Don't say that. No, no, I pay to have it blocked. Ah. Uh. What if you uh, could pay to have an ad blocker installed at the ISP level? I wouldn't trust them. Yeah. <laughs> oh, we block ads, but not the ones we agree to. Yeah. I mean, that's basically, actually, that's a great way of describing the, uh, you know, the fast lane internet is like, yeah, oh, we're going to make it so that the other ads really don't run right. And the Danish have an impressive milestone. However, as beautiful as this is, as good news as this is, it means that they have ushered in the age of digital currency, which is not good. <laughs> Danish Bank of Workers celebrate its first full year without robberies. You should scroll down to the, the quote in the article that's like, yeah, because nobody uses cash anymore. And it's yeah. like, oh, oh. Wah, wah, wah. Paywalled. Yeah. yeah, there's lots of other kinds. I wonder if in terms of like overall theft as a monetary value, it's probably going up at such an insane rate that, you know, even the crooks who were small time, you know, you rob a bank, you're going to get what? A thousand dollars. They don't keep a lot. Yeah. Yeah, on hand. Maybe five thousand. Like let, let's say ten thousand dollars. You rob a bank, you're gonna get ten thousand dollars. But if you're Enron or Sam Brankman Freed or you know, Adelphia or whoever, you can rob at a much larger scale. I don't know if Enron was in the same category as bank robbers. <laughs> SBF for sure. HSBC. But, yeah, <laughs> but your point it like you make a good point in terms of let's compare what they lost last year in bank robberies or the past five years. Versus what they lost in crypto theft. Yeah. So, and then the leaders identity gonna, theft. Yeah. The leader's going to be like, "Well, that's decentralized crypto. <laughs> Ours will be better. Evil. You want government crypto? That's where it's at." It, it follows that as soon as government crypto happens, I mean, imagine a world where it's like you get a speeding ticket and it's immediately deducted from your bank account. Oh man, the way that banks already structure the debits to maximize the chances that you're going to have one of their fee events. And then you have that. Oh, it's fabulous. You get the text message from your insurance company before the cop turns his lights on. <laughs> it's expensive to be poor. Yeah. That's a good way to yeah. uh -huh. I also like the Futurama joke for that, which was, uh, uh, I think it was Fry got a, a bunch of text messages in a row and it was like, your car is illegally parked. Your car has been towed. Your car has been crushed into a cube. Your cube is illegally parked. <laughs> You've been fined yeah. for each instance. And Rishi Sunak, Sunak. I still don't know how to pronounce the man's name. I haven't heard it said out loud. I've only read it. We're going to say Sunak. Uh, he, I think what's happening here is that as we look at the manufacturing picture and we say to ourselves, we have to bring advanced chip manufacturing and other manufacturing home because China is imploding and <coughs> the world is changing. Are our people smart enough for that? And he might not like the answer that he's finding. He's uh, going to propose a compulsory math for students up to 18. I didn't know this, but apparently in the UK, like once you turn 16, you can choose to keep going or you can go into like you plumbing or electricity. Yeah. But in, I think it's like college, right? Where you set your own courses and you I, can opt out. Of, I guess if you're in the UK, let us know. Which is wild. I don't know if we should like, some people are probably going to point out it's like no, but our age sixteen math is like more advanced than your probably first yeah. year of college. There's a lot of mismatches. I I would countries. like math to be taught better because I struggled with math and half the time like I would talk to a teacher about it and they'd just be like, no, this is just the way it is. And I was like, but can you explain it to me? Like I don't understand why it is this way. Or somebody you you get help elsewhere. Yeah. And they teach you a different way to do it. Yeah. And the teacher's like, no. I had a teacher do that to me. Like I, I finally understood how to do a certain like algebra thing because another teacher taught me a new way to do it. And I was like, oh, that makes so much sense. And I went to my other teacher and she's like, no, you can't do it that way. There are a lot of really great teachers, math and all other things who supplement their terrible teaching income by putting it all on YouTube. So mm. you can just get a better education <laughs> on YouTube. There, yeah. <laughs> Once you know what you need to learn, just punch that in and then go learn it. <laughs> you might run into that whole like you're not allowed to do it this way thing, but. I never understood, perhaps an, an, another engagement challenge is tell us how your education system engages with math, because at least for our stuff, it seemed like teaching you math via currency and like real world word problems, like here is pi or here is three pies 
and there's 20 students in the class. How do we divide three pies evenly into 20 different students? I've vastly preferred stuff like that as well, where it was like real world scenario. And it's like, oh, that's easy. And it's like, how many students would you need to take up more than half of one pie? And it's like, oh, let's figure that out. It's interesting. It's definitely not how they did it in our day. No, no, not at all. It was the most awful, mind numbing, you know, it's like four quarters make a dollar is is super confusing. And if we have learned anything from the Twitter files, it is that our government pretty much, I think, you know, based on we can extrapolate from Twitter, the government is just elbow deep in every giant tech platform. They're in control. They're controlling the narrative. They're taking things down. They're, you know, whatever they want to do, they're doing. And it's not conspiracy theory. Sometimes they're just there surreptitiously. They're definitely there. But <laughs> we're not the only one to do that, obviously. Now we know the big names, China, Russia. We've we've heard about them. Not just them. There may be the big ones, but add a new big one to the list. Saudi Arabia jails two Wikipedia staff in, quote unquote, bid to control content. They jailed one of them for 32 years. Yeah. That was their sentence. That's and this is wild. this is fascinating because it's not just, oh, you know, you read this superficially and this is strong arming. But then you think, you know, these governments have enough money to afford to pay somebody to go work for a company. I mean, if you're a company and, the, you know, your dream candidate shows up and they're willing to take under market rates, you're really not going to look that gift horse in the mouth. Meanwhile, they're you know, looking out for the party's interests mm. and, uh, <laughs> under the radar without you really knowing. Also, when Wikipedia started looking into this, they found a bunch of Saudi Arabian accounts that had wormed their way into administrative editor status somehow. Yeah. But they were for sure state mouthpieces. So. Where does the, the woman who spent hours editing Wikipedia articles, the, the housewife in China, how does she fall on this scale? Hers wasn't necessarily like uh it wasn't malicious it was just like i'm bored so i'm gonna yeah. do this it wasn't malicious but it was horrible disinformation yeah about history and moving on to the uh security section this is and i'm i'm we're already sitting down so there's not too much <laughs> danger but just brace yourselves this is a shocking headline Ars Technica reports hundreds of WordPress sites infected by recently discovered backdoor, more like tens of thousands, but that's cool. Basically, if you don't have everything on automatic update and deal with the breakage that comes with that, you were in for a bad time over the holidays. As usual, it's the plugins, uh, and here's your list. There's a lot of them. It was also a WordPress core if you didn't patch in a long time. This is why we don't support WordPress anymore. So bad. And yet people insist. We'll, put, we'll pay you. And it's like, oh, you don't pay us enough. It also speaks a lot to the, the caliber of person that you have working on your website when they're like, I need to, to be able to use WordPress to do things. And it's like, mm -hmm. well, car vulnerabilities are more and more popping up. Of course, we've got the Kia boys, Hyundai, that whole situation. And we've had so many wireless attacks, but it seems to only be getting worse. Major flaws found in Mercedes, Ferrari, and other top, top luxury cars. Why? Because they don't have uh, that many software engineers on their payroll. Sorry. Um, and the ones that are, are overworked. <laughs> we spared no expense except for on the software people. <laughs> A lot of this came from the like subscription-based online portal to manage your car after the purchase. Yeah. You know, like where you don't just buy a car anymore. Now you're part of the family. Mm. Log in and manage everything because it's all online. It's all talking back to the API. <laughs> to thieves, it's also known as findthenearestmclaren.com. <laughs> <laughs> and they pointed out for the Ferrari, which you would expect to be you know, high profile, you could actually go in without signing on. You could uh, violate the single sign-on and get in and change ownership to yourself. Wow. It's going to be amazing when they fire all the human staff to deal with this because the AI gets good enough. Uh, good what, enough. What, what sort of Kafka-esque nightmare is it going to be? It's like, I didn't sell my Ferrari. It's like, sorry, sir. It says here that you sold your Ferrari. We well, don't have anybody who actually knows how to interpret the AI because we didn't teach them that in school. That's going to be combined with self-driving where your Ferrari just starts itself up and goes to somebody else's house. <laughs> it's like, oh, transfer of ownership is complete. Yeah. <laughs> what did I sell it for? This old Magic the Gathering card. <laughs> No, it'll be an NFT of a Magic Gathering card. 
And peer-to-peer -peer is uh, a, a terrible wasteland. You should never trust peer-to-peer -peer because people can get in there and do bad, horrible things. And maybe they haven't done that yet here, but oh boy, is it ripe for the picking. Major torrent providers that are private now have a security disaster to fix. This happened over the holidays. So it turns out those details are leaking. People use the site internally, how they're structured, and a lot of the decentralization, including the providers that they use, who can be targeted by rights holders. It has to do with how they propagate and how when one tracker or one service gets it, the other ones pick it up over the feeds, and none of that is secure. So if you know what you're doing, you can go back and kind of follow it to the beginning, and it uncovers a lot of identities along the way. And Bitcoin, as we know, is decentralized and it doesn't need any governments to operate and it wants to be libertarian and free until something goes wrong. Key Bitcoin developer calls on the FBI to recover $3.6 million in the digital coin because it was stolen. Is this stock image, is this a Bitcoin made of cheese? Yeah, it looks like it. Uh. They're caught in the trap. Yeah. I don't want the cheese. I just want out of the trap. He lost quite a bit of money and uh the fbi is so far leaving him on red <laughs> they don't seem concerned and qr codes are uh you know they're interesting but the thing about it is anybody can throw up a qr code and you never know where it's going to take you it could take you someplace very very dangerous and clearly the melbourne leaders didn't think about this Melbourne Lord Meyer says the vandalism, quote unquote, of QR codes for reporting graffiti is so frustrating. Look at how good this, like they literally just pasted it over top. <laughs> <laughs> they went, that, that didn't cost them a lot of money. No, to no, to make a sticker. Up. Yeah, no. Yeah. So this actually does not take you to a bad place. It takes you to a YouTube video sort of uh, talking about how great graffiti is as an art form. Mm. So they have vowed to double down and destroy these as well as the graffiti. Excellent. Good luck. And we hear a lot about ransomware gangs who attack hospitals. Pretty deplorable. It's up there with like turning the heat off in buildings. But sometimes they do it by mistake. Ransomware gang has apologized and gives the six sick kids a hospital a free decryptor. They should also donate. Yeah. To yeah. make up for the trouble that they caused. Also, like... How do you not see it in the name? Sick kids. Like, it's not even subtle. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty obvious. They said that, because obviously these are not, like, tight-knit groups, you know? Like, they bring people in and out, and they said that person was acting against the rules. Mm. Mm. No honor yeah. among thieves. Exactly. And did we talk about this one? I don't remember hearing much about uh -huh. this. And it's, they've been very quiet about it to keep it this It wasn't long. on any of the articles that we looked at. The headline is a mysterious cyber attack has shuttered the Guardian's office for a month. Oh, we're just taking off for the holidays. <laughs> this happened right before Christmas and, and IT was like, nope, not dealing with this. Pretty I'm, sure I'm through with the overtime. We had an article from the Guardian, I think, last week and like, it seemed fine. <laughs> no. It could have also been a WordPress instance on, on mm. Digital Ocean. They're, they're still running. They said they've had a real tough time getting the print edition out ah, you know, with okay. these problems. But... Yeah, they say that they're pretty much working around the clock to get around all the mm. problems it's caused, but they can't fix it. And Slack have had a terrible leak. Once again, no one can protect these keys. No one can protect anything. It's just terrible. Slack's private GitHub code repositories stolen over the holidays. What that means, as always, while we include these stories on level one links with friends, is uh, there will be exploits for Slack that come out as a result of this in the coming weeks and months. So be careful of links that you click on. Be careful of stuff that you have. Trust nobody. You must be careful. And, you know, you paste passwords or anything in your Slack history and you hang on to that forever. There may be a way for somebody to get at that. We don't, we don't know. Hopefully Stay some, Yeah, hopefully someone's paying attention to that. This could be bad. Because this is usually the tip of the iceberg. Remember the last pass thing started out this way? That's how wrong it can go. Now, on the last pass thing, there were also, uh, you know, uh, private equity partners involved in that. And it's probably not that bad with uh, what we're seeing on GitHub because Microsoft. 
but it could be that bad eventually. Copy pasting is also always dangerous, but these two stories are basically copy pasted. Circle CI warns customers to rotate any and all secrets after hack. There have been a couple of people that have popped up on Twitter and said, hey, weird things have happened with my Amazon account because of tokens that were stored in private Circle CI systems. So Circle CI, out of an abundance of caution, says, yeah, you should, if you were using Circle CI for any of your integration or your DevOps or whatever, it is now a huge headache because you have to go and you're going to rotate your keys and pull stuff out and blah, blah, blah double check the keys that you generated against your own repository. And yeah, it's going to just, Oh my God. It's probably a week of work for even a small organization. It's real bad. Bad news. Never been a better time to set up your own DIY circle CI system. It's not that hard anymore. You can even self host GitLab. Give those guys some money. Unfortunately, that is our last link to share with our friends this week. We're at 25 minutes. We're Ooh. a little short. We're going to get some angry comments about that. But listen, blame the holidays. What are you looking forward to this month? There we go. Let's, we'll, we'll pad out the time a little. I don't know. Nothing? Yeah, what do you nothing. got? Uh, I'm going to visit my cousins this weekend. But other than that, I don't have a lot. It doesn't sound that exciting. How was, how was the biscuits and gravy you made? Did you do, did you do the two ingredient biscuits? I did. Listen. My country breakfast skills have reached a new level. <laughs> All right, Cracker Barrel or higher? Hmm. I would say right there. What huh? you hadn't realized is that you had a genetic predisposition to do those kinds of meals well. <laughs> a racial bonus. <laughs> <laughs> I made biscuits and gravy, two ingredient biscuits. I added salt this time because they are a little bland. Yeah, the salt, you gotta have salt. The salt really kicked it up. And fried apples i've mm -hmm. added fried apples to the equation fried apples are insanely easy to make oh but uh my god was that good for my after lunch snack today i had apple slices with a little bit of honey on them and it was delightful well let's pat it a little bit more what <laughs> give us a tick update i'm okay i'm still i'm still exercising really hard and everything is good on the on the cardio and stuff so. but i mean are you right now i think you're in a, a situation where like you could Go back to the sugar maybe a little bit, but you're like trying to stay strong. Yeah. Stay Is on that, the wagon. Are yeah. you still? Yeah. I figure, you know, why, why not, uh, you know, why not embrace the horror and just, you know, <laughs> I, like I want to stay alive through the dystopia. I like how we, you know, the modern lifestyle is like living without sugar is a horror. <laughs> uh -huh. How many, how many years have we actually had refined sugar? <laughs> well, we've had it for a long time. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, refined sugar yeah oh since like the age of the tutors it became really popular in tudor england but in human history that's not that long well but longer than the history of the u.s in uh in a in the history of civilization it's it's really not very long but you know it wasn't that long ago that just having tea or sweet tea you know that was like the big luxurious drink it's like oh sweet tea well you look at like old recipe books and it's like oh carrot cake and people were like this is you know, super sweet. And it's like, oh, carrot cake's not that sweet, but that's because we're used to other stuff now. I still have to sleep a lot and, and, uh, and my energy levels aren't anywhere near what they used to be, but, uh, the, I, I don't have a problem maxing out the, the, uh, the elliptical. So that's good, I guess. Well, there you go. There's an extra, uh, three minutes and a half. There you go. Perfect. <laughs> All right. We'll see you guys. Bye. Woo! Thank you.